Okay, Victor, Martin. thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for the introduction and invitation. And I will tell you about uh, a work uh, that uh, that I did with uh, uh, mainly three collaborators. So Sven Bachmann from uh, Vancouver and uh, Alex Bowles uh, and Wojciech Daruk uh, uh, were at KU Leuven. In, in, the, in the meantime, Alex moved, but, uh, but Wojciech is still at KU Leuven. Okay, so um, I prepared a uh, um, sort of overview of, uh, of uh, recent mathematical physics works on quantum Hall effect, actually not just recent, several mathematical physics works on quantum Hall effect. Uh, but I do not need to, you know, necessarily finish my, my slides. So, you know, you can stop me anytime and, you know, ask questions, um, you know, so feel free to jump in. Okay, so uh, most of the talk would be focused on, uh, on quantum Hall effect. And so uh, here is a here is a um, quick uh, introduction or you know, uh, a recall of quantum Hall effect. So so it's a it's an effect uh, that happens for for electrons uh, in two D. So you take a you take a you know metallic plate of electrons in two D. Uh, you put it into magnetic field. So this is this B that pierces this uh, uh, magnetic this this metal this this plate. Uh, you put there, uh, you know, voltage in one direction. So this would be X2 direction. And then you will see, uh, you know, it, it depends on the magnetic field, but you will see electrons uh, moving in the opposite direction. And, uh, okay, so this is a well-known classical effect. It's called Hall effect. And uh, if you do it, if you measure it at very low temperatures and you measure the dependence on this, uh, uh, on the associated uh, resistance or conductance, so the whole one, the one in the opposite direction on the magnetic field, uh, you know, you will see this kind of picture uh, where the, where the uh, resistance has these plateaus uh, um, as you vary the magnetic field. And uh, uh, so, the, so what is plotted here is the resistance, but the numbers associated to the plateaus are the conductance, uh, so the one over resistance. And you see, um, and you see this very interesting uh, staircase type plot uh, where there are plateaus of this resistance. And each time you see a plateau, there is associated, um, uh, there is associated uh, vanishing of the, of, the, of the current in the, in the direction that you put the difference of potential, which means that at those plateaus, the, the, uh, uh, it becomes an insulator. So the material is insulating. And okay, so the, this is this is uh, this is effect that is studied for last you know fifty years uh, in in uh, uh, in lots of details. Uh, so I I I am not uh, you know I will I will uh, you know uh, not uh, do it justice, uh, but I want to just stress two 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 differences. So plateaus that have an integer conductance, these are associated to what we call uh, integer quantum hole effect. And so this is this one, uh, two, three, and four in this picture. Uh, they, they, the, you know, the, the, uh, it's a, it's an insulator. So the, so the, it, it is gapped in the absence of disorder. And uh, to explain the plateaus, uh, you need to add disorder. So the plateaus are explained by disorder. So this is integer quantum Hall effect. Uh, fractional quantum Hall effect refers to the plateaus with uh, fractional conductance. So, for example, one third is the most famous one. Uh, for to explain or to you know to to get a, a fractional quantum Hall effect, you need interactions. Uh, you know, we, it's it's proved that without interactions, you can't get a fractional uh, uh, Hall conductance. Uh, they have anionic excitations. Uh, or like can have anionic excitations um, uh, that can be both abelian and non-abelian. And, and they have a degenerate ground state if you put the material on torus. So if you put the Hamilton in a torus, uh, you get degenerate ground state for a fraction of quantum hole effect. Uh, maybe I should also stress uh, on the picture, not all fractions uh, appear in the picture. So for example, the famous fraction that doesn't appear is one half. Uh, lots of it is understood about which fractions do appear and which fractions don't appear, uh, but complete theory uh, is, is, is missing. There is no complete theory of, uh, 
of each fractions uh, appear in this plot or like how it depends on the material uh, that, that that you study okay uh, let me let me quickly go through the you know original argument of why um, this whole conductance is quantized so uh, so we will take so in this argument that is Laughlin's argument original argument uh, so we, we look at again and this and this at this square uh, and uh, now we now we wrap it into a cylinder so instead of looking at the geometry uh, on a plane uh, we look at the geometry on a cylinder this is a very typical um, feature of of uh, working on quantum Hall effect uh, uh, lots of different geometries so cylinder geometry plane geometry sphere geometry torus geometry uh, they all, uh, you know, are important and are all, uh, all all studied to to show various features. So, so in this in this in this argument, we wrap it into a cylinder, and uh, and uh, instead of this electric field in the direction um, in the direction x two, uh, we we make a time dependent uh, flux that is threading the cylinder through the through the hole of the cylinder. We also extend the cylinder to the infinity. And then, then Landau Hamiltonian for 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 that cylinder uh, is is uh, is a is a is a free uh, particle, free electron on a cylinder uh, with magnetic field. So there, are, there 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 is magnetic field corresponding to the to the to the magnetic field B piercing the cylinder, and then there is this uh, uh, time dependent uh, magnetic uh, flux phi associated with threading the cylinder. Uh, this 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 magnetic flux field that threads the cylinder, the time dependent one is just there to 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 generate um, electro uh, to generate the electric force in the direction x two by Maxwell equations. So um, so we so we look at this Landau Hamiltonian, uh, which is which is uh, you know one particle um, Hamiltonian without without interactions, and this Hamiltonian is exactly solvable. So you can exactly find uh, Eigen energies and eigen functions uh, for this Hamiltonian, and if you do it, you would you would you would find that um, uh, you would find what is called the Landau levels. So the the eigen energies of this Hamiltonian are, are very degenerate. So they 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 all um, you know um, they are, they, are, they are discrete. They are di the discrete set of energies, and at each of these discrete energy, there is in, there is infinite degeneracy. And this is this is what is called Landau level. So each of these discrete energy that is degenerate is called Landau level. And uh, inside this Landau level, you can fix uh, eigenbasis of this of these various um, uh, of these various eigenfunctions, uh, so that so that uh, uh, each of the eigenstate uh, is is localized at given position x one. So here is a given position on the x1 axis. So let me put it on this picture. So it would be somewhere. It would be somewhere here. So it's localized on the on the around x1 axis, and uh, and the decays. You know, it it wraps. Uh, you know, all around the all around the cylinder the wave function, but it's localized on the x1 axis. So the associated wave function decays if you move uh, around x1. Uh, and and uh, and uh, you know so you can make this you can find these eigenfunctions that are localized at different uh, x1 uh, x1 uh, centers. And uh, now you fix a uh, uh, Fermi energy. So uh, here is a Fermi energy uh, that is fixed. And then and then uh, you know everything below the Fermi energy is occupied. Everything above the Fermi energy is uh, is unoccupied. And we want to understand what happens when we move the flux. So as we move the flux from uh, zero to two pi, we want to understand what happens with this with this eigenstates. And now again, it's exactly solvable, so you can exactly compute that the that the that the position of this eigenstate, as depending on the flux, uh, is given by uh, n times so n n label this uh, this eigenstates their position. Times a universal constant, so H C over Q uh, uh, minus phi, so minus that this flux. So we see that if I move the flux from uh, 
zero to actually hc over q, which is the unit flux in these units. Uh, each of the dots, uh, so this, so this, um, so this uh, dot moves to the to its nearest neighbor. So it, it moves by one. This means that so each dot represents an electron. So this means that if there is a fiducial line in my in my x one space, and I want to know how many electrons will move through this fiducial line as I increase the flux from zero to two pi, then the then the then it's just like a number of occupied levels. Uh, uh, is the number of electrons. Now you need to put it all together. You need to calculate what is the electric field generated by this by this moving of this flux. If you put it all this together, you would you would calculate that the whole conductance is the number of occupied levels times the universal constant, which is which is Q squared over over H. So um, so this is the Laughlin argument for 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 why the uh, whole conductance is quantized. And you know it's a it's a sort of version of Hilbert's hotel where you know uh, uh, everything moves uh, you know moving flux from zero to the to the one quanta of flux uh, you know brings everything back to its original position, but nevertheless uh, there is there is a there is a current uh, flowing uh, in that process through through any uh, any cross section. And and we will see a sort of this argument uh, later in in, a, in in fact very similar fashion just just in a more complicated uh, situation okay so this is this is um, this is uh, an offering argument about uh, quantum Hall effect just what does it mean to make argue to make sort of a formalization of the laughing argument there are two uh, conceptual points uh, one is adiabatic theory so, so we need to, you know, I, I he, here I pretended that everything moves adiabatically already, but in theory I would have to solve a time-dependent Schrödinger equation that corresponds to moving of this flux, and show that the, show that the solution is close to the to the instantaneous Fermi projection at each phi, uh, and uh, and then then we use some kind of index theory. Here, the index theory was just counting the number of electrons crossing the line, uh, but in general, we would need uh, more. You know, once it is not exactly solvable, we would need uh, some uh, some index theory to associate index to this flow. Uh, and I'm only going to talk about uh, uh, I'm only going to talk about the the second thing. Uh, also, the first uh, the adiabatic theory. Uh, um, so we, we also developed adiabatic theory with interactions. Uh, I, I, I give some references uh, at the end. So also the first step is now well um, uh, understood within mathematical physics literature, uh, and uh, but I will not talk about it. Uh, okay, so for, for non-interacting systems, so essentially that last argument I was talking about, um, so this was this was fully solved in in 80s and 90s. I will give a little bit of overview uh, later. And the theory of interactions, this is what I'm going to talk about, uh, was then open for uh, you know uh, around 25 uh, years. Okay, so this is a little bit of uh, mathematical physics history of quantum hole index theories. And I want to stress that it's mathematical physics. I can't give uh, justice to like uh, history of quantum Hall effect itself. So it's very selective to mathematical physics. Uh, and, uh, and so various explanations and various uh, index theories that, that, uh, that were used uh, to um, describe quantum Hall effect. And I will talk uh, about some of them more in the, in later in details. So the, so the first one was, was 83. Avron Siren and Simon uh, made, uh, you know, uh, was the first mathematical physics works uh, using chair numbers to explain quantum Hall effect. Um, there was, of course, previously work of Tallis uh, that that uh, that uh, that uh, you know expressed the whole conductor as a chair number. And this was for non-interacting systems. So this was for non-interacting systems. And in '85, uh, Avron and Siler. Uh, in, in fact, in parallel, uh, uh, so it was works that 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 were done in parallel uh, with new um, Taulas and Wu. Uh, they they introduced what is called Toros of fluxes, 
uh, where these chair numbers also work in interacting systems. And I will, I will explain that, uh, I will explain that later. And uh, that was also, this was, um, you know, uh, either non-interacting or interacting systems, but without disorder. So both these works are without disorder. And then, uh, then in the 90s, uh, so it took around 10 years to understood how to incorporate uh, disorder, but without interactions. So, uh, and, the, and the first work was by Berissard, Fannest, and Schulz Baldes. Uh, this is what they call non commutative geometry, and I will not be talking about that. And then there was a follow up work by Avron, Silo, and Simon, uh, where they essentially try to, you know, like give. Uh, uh, present the work of Berissard in more, uh, in more uh, pedestrian way. Uh, and that's, that's, that index is called index of projections. And this sort of developed, so these two works developed um, a theory that can be used to actually add disorder and understood quantum Hall effect with disorder. And then the actual, but the actual proof using this, this framework uh, of quantization with disorder. So proving that there are really plateaus uh, uh, is by Eisenman and Graf from from ninety eight. Uh, okay, and that was that was sort of the end of the history uh, for the quantum Hall effect. Uh, you know, again, mathematical physics without interactions, and uh, and all the you know the following uh, year, uh, you know, Michael Eisenman made sort of a list of open problems in mathematical physics, and included the open problem of adding uh, interactions uh, to quantum Hall effect. And uh, and this was then like this was proved ten years later by Hastings Michalakis. Uh, that's a that's a that's a that's a paper where there's, there's a very interesting history. So the zero nine is when it was put on archive, but I think it was only published like seven eight years later, maybe in two thousand sixteen, uh, because it was paper that was very hard to uh, to prove it and uh, and. Uh, no one was sure whether whether they uh, you know it solved the problem or not. In fact, even after it was published, uh, it was not uh, within the community clear that this is accepted as a proof. Uh, and so then you know um, then at some point we decided that this uh, you know doesn't make any sense and that you know it can't be that hard to understand what they uh, what they write. And what they did is ex is is definitely a correct proof. There was nothing wrong with their paper. So, uh, so to you know, sort of like uh, you know, uh, correct the situation. We wrote uh, uh, a paper that doesn't have anything new. It just tries to present the proof in a in a simplified way. Uh, and it may be you know good uh, you know if you want to read this Hastings Michalakis paper, uh, you know other paper may be good introduction to that um, paper. Uh, there is also lots of now, um, uh, you know, Michalakis uh, wrote lots of popular pieces about about this work. So there is lots of, uh, you know, popular articles. Lately, even Hastings joined and wrote his version of history of this article that is on archive. So there is lots of, uh, you know, um, texts about that article. Okay, and then a year later, uh, we, de we developed um, a general many-body federal index theory of which uh, proving the you know quantization of whole conductance is is a is a just a particle example of that of that index theory. Excuse me, I have a question here. Uh, maybe yes. comment. That is uh, uh, I think in eighty five uh, there is a paper uh, by Niu Wu and Saulus uh, discussing the uh, quantized Hall effect, quantized Hall conductance uh, for interacting system. They even uh, try to apply the result to fractional quantum Mahal space. So this uh, uh, that they define the chain number for many body interacting system. That's that's eighty five. So there's a there's an earlier work for that. That that's absolutely correct. Uh, it's it's uh, it's even would be mentioned very very soon on my slides. So so uh, so give me a second. I well, let me come back to it. Okay. So, so, uh, so I, I will mention that work in a second. Uh, I wanted to only say that I, 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 I in fact, already mentioned the work, uh, the, the 85 work of Avran Seiler and the, and the 85 work of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Neil Tallis uh, and then are, 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 you know, um, there to my understanding, uh, you know, published simultaneously and 
have have reasonably similar uh, material included. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I will go through various of this of this of these works. And uh, and uh, um, and uh, uh, so the first first thing I want to I want to um, uh, I want to um, explain uh, a little bit in some detail is this is this uh, ninety four work of of uh, Avron Siler Simon on index of projections. So so the key mathematical uh, you know um, tool is the following. Um, Theorem, uh, index of a unitary. So uh, let's Q be a projection and U a unitary, uh, such that the commutator of these two objects is a Tice class operator. So uh, so this means that 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 you can uh, take a trace of it. In fact, trace of absolute value of that of that operator. Uh, then the trace of uh, of uh, Q evolved by U. So U start Q U minus q is an integer um, of course if if uh, uh, if um, uh, let me write it somewhere here uh, if uh, rank q uh, is finite uh, then then this space of u star q u minus q is equal to rank of u star q u minus rank of q and that is just equal to zero so so uh, for uh, finite rank projections uh, it's not very interesting it's just zero it's okay it's integer but it's not very interesting integer um uh, it's interesting integer only if q is uh, infinite dimensional uh, a, a very typical example if you consider you know um uh, hopping on a on a on a lattice, so L two of, of of Z on on a one D lattice, and uh, and Q that that uh, you know it's a uh, everything above zero is occupied, and everything below zero is not. Uh, then and you take any U, then this trace U star Q U minus Q, a little bit computation shows that it's a probability of jumping uh, from positive uh, from negative to positive. Minus probability of jumping from uh, from positive uh, to negative, so it's sort of a probability flow across this Fidusha point zero, and uh, and this is sometimes called uh, index of a unitary or flow of a unitary. So this is sometimes called uh, F of U for flow of a unitary. And um, and if you take U, so as an example, if you take U uh, a right shift. Uh, then, then after shifting, uh, after shifting uh, the the object, you know this one would move to here. After shifting by this u, and then the difference would give you one. So just to see that the, the integer doesn't need to be zero all the time. Uh, in application to to quantum Hall effect, uh, this q is a Fermi projection. And the U is exactly this uh, uh, unitary that that in, that that uh, that that pierces the system with 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 flux, so that changes flux from zero uh, to to the to the unit flux. Uh, I, I'm not going to show that that's the case, but that that's that's how you obtain uh, that's how you obtain whole conductance. Uh, it may be interesting, actually, also for what comes later. Uh, to look at the uh, you know finite size proof of this by Kitaev, I, I it would be very clear soon why I call it the finite size that you can find in the appendix uh, uh, of a historic code uh, uh, of this exactly solvable uh, toric code uh, paper. So um, so we will only consider uh, we will only consider line. So so it would not be as general as the previous uh, proposition. And uh, we will consider operators with a rapid decay. These are operators that that if you you know look at the matrix elements. So uh, maybe I should make the line. So here is a here is a line. Here is uh, somewhere i, somewhere j, and if you look at the matrix element uh, of an operator O i j, it needs to decay in the distance between i and j. So the distance is L. 
So uh, it needs to decay in this distance. Uh, and in particular, if the unitary has this rapid decay, so it's a, it's a local object, and Q is as above, so it's this uh, you know, um, projection on the, on the sides, uh, Q is above, so it's a projection on these sides uh, that, are, that are above uh, um, x equal to zero. So that's the only thing we would look at. And now, now you chop it. So that's why I'm calling it the finite size proof. So we, we don't look all this Q, but we chop it at some big L. So we only look at, at the projection from side zero to side big L. And now if you look how uh, you know, this evolves, uh, if, you, if you sandwich it with U, then, then because of this rapid decay, it can only change the projection around the endpoints. So everyone el everywhere else it commutes, so it only changed the projections at the endpoints, uh, up to something, some error that that you know decays with with L because because this may not be exactly local, but it decays. Uh, so so it has two contributions: contribution around zero, uh, which is Q minus, uh, which is this T minus, a contribution around uh, L, which is which is denoted by T plus. So, so if I now uh, look at the square, so this is equal to the square of itself, it's a projection. And uh, if I compute square of, uh, of this line, uh, you know, these three objects are orthogonal to each other. So, so the only thing I have here is Q minus plus T minus squared plus QM squared in the middle, which is QM plus Q plus plus T plus squared. Uh, plus this error. So, so uh, now looking at it, they are supported at different uh, different places. So the only thing that this can be true is if the, if these two are equal. So each of them needs to be equal separately. So, so that shows that that this uh, Q minus plus T minus is a projection, and hence if I look at uh, uh, the 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 you know the U star Q minus Q. That of course doesn't see this uh, right, uh, you know, uh, endpoint. That only sees the endpoint at zero. So it's the limit as the right endpoint goes to infinity of just what happens around zero minus what was there before. And now um, this is projection. So the trace is the rank of that projection. Q minus is a projection. So it's the rank of that projection. So it's manifestly a different of two integers. Um, Okay, so that's that's uh, that was the finite size proof of Kitaev for this index of projections, and we will see something similar in the in the in the many body version. Okay, so that was that was what I wanted to uh, talk about the first paper, and now I will talk about uh, about this uh, work uh, of Avro and Seiler, uh, and you know uh, the the also the work of Niu, Tawas, and Wu. And uh, so, so this was a chair number approach for interacting systems. So, so um, we take a Hamiltonian. Now, this is a Hamiltonian for n electrons uh, on a on a on a torus uh, with a magnetic field piercing the torus, and uh, and you know some some potential and and interactions. So, so it, it's it's a it's a full model. And uh, and we introduced uh, so this is without um, this magnetic field that pierces and we introduced this sorry threads we introduced these two magnetic fields threading the torus for the two holes of the torus by by minimal coupling so by by changing pj to pj plus uh, this constant phj and this gives a Hamiltonian a family of Hamiltonians H v one p two. And now uh, P of phi one phi two be its ground state projection. So uh, so this P of phi one phi two is the ground state projection. It's a very different object than the Fermi projection that we had previously. This is a rank one projection. It's just a projection on the ground state of the many body ground state. And uh, and then uh, you know one can compute the curvature. Of this of this uh, of this projection, which is just trace p dp dp, so this is a projection. Um, I'm missing i here. This is a projection. This is a curvature associated to this family of projections, 
And uh, then two things uh, actually were already known, uh, you know, before this 85 work. Uh, first of all, that Kubo formula uh, is proportional to this curvature at, at, at fluxes zero, zero. So the, so the whole conductance can be obtained, uh, you know, it's, it's proportional to this curvature and some universal constant. And the second thing uh, that is, you know, well known from differential geometry, that if you integrate such a curvature over all fluxes, you get two pi times an integer. Uh, now, now uh, how does this prove the, the, the quantization of whole conductance? Um, uh, well, on a physical ground, it's actually, you know, uh, quite, quite clear that that should be the case. But, but so Neil Towers and Wu argued that this kappa is constant. It doesn't depend on this phi one and phi two. Uh, if you do it via perturbation theory, again, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, differentiate and you see that that should be the case. Uh, uh, constant in, in what? Constant in the thermodynamic limit where you send n to infinity, of course, keeping the density uh, fixed. Um, but, but, you know, so this is exactly the point. So this was this sort of, you know, maybe minor point, may, important point for actually proving it uh, for a mathematical work. Uh, that took 25 years to prove, and this is actually what uh, what Hastings and Michalakis proved that this that this kappa is indeed constant. Um, I should say uh, maybe um, maybe a few disclaimers. First of all, uh, you know it, it can be literary. Uh, it can be literary too that it's constant. If you if you if you consider any interactions and maybe any you know Hamiltonian uh, uh, you know here you know with a bit more general Hamiltonian and any potential and any interactions uh, it, it it would probably not be even differentiable so 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 they actually proved something a little bit different they did not really consider uh, exactly uh, exactly the ground state of such Hamiltonian. But just something a little bit different. Uh, but I think I will. I I think for 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 the um, for the spirit of it, uh, you know, uh, one 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 should think that they prove that kappa is constant. Uh, okay, so that was uh, so, and that was that was sort of uh, you know uh, where the problem stand uh, in nineties, and uh, and. Um, uh, and and the and the and the and the question was to prove that that this kappa is constant. Uh, now now this was not actually really proved in this uh, continuum, uh, but but only on a lattice system. The reason why why it is not proved in a continuum uh, is that in continuum there are no there is no good version of Lee Robinson bounds. So Lee Robinson bounds is one of the sort of uh, technical. Uh, Tools, very important technical tools uh, uh, for many body systems, and uh, and uh, and to have this tool, uh, you know, Hastings and Michalakis switched to the lattice setting uh, of the problem. So let me introduce the lattice setting of the problem. So uh, so we would have a fermions hopping on a lattice. So we we now have a still the torus, but now that now it is a lattice torus. Maybe in the dimensions you can think that d is equal to two. Uh, it would work also in other dimensions. And at each uh, point, uh, it each uh, so I have this lattice, and at each side of the lattice, uh, I have I have a I have a uh, I have a creation operator for a fermion. You can have some internal degrees of freedom, so you can have more of them. It would not make any difference. Uh, then then I have some gap finite range Hamiltonian H with a ground state projection P, and uh, and. Very importantly, I have a charge operator in agent omega. So this is just a number of uh, electrons in that agent. Uh, important point, you know, uh, for further reference, this charge has integer spectrum and it's a sum of on-site contributions. So that's just like, you know, reading this formula. Uh, this is a little bit of technicality. So if there is a region X in the lattice, so uh, again, I have this lattice here. And uh, I have some region in the lattice. Uh, then, then uh, by x with a small r, uh, I will denote uh, you know a region that that takes all the neighboring uh, points to this region. 
uh, up to distance r. And this is important to sort of like uh, discuss locality. So, uh, so I would consider local unitary as u. And for me, that would mean that if you have a operator, if you have an observable supported on this region x, and you evolve it uh, by this unitary, and then you get a, a observable that is supported in this enlarged region x, xr with possible some corrections that, that decays uh, as, you fly, as you take more and more sides in this enlargement. Um, okay, but okay, it's, it's, it's just unitary that acts locally. Um, okay, I think I already said that the Hamiltonian is gapped and there is a spectral projection. It needs to conserve the total charge. So the Hamilton needs to be charge conserving. And then uh, for Q, I will define Q as a charge in the half torus. So I take only half of the torus and define Q as a, as a charge in the half of the torus. This means that it has two boundaries, uh, which I call uh, D minus and D plus. Uh, sometimes I will need uh, a charge so this is half torus from x1 equal to zero to x1 equal to L over two. Sometimes I will use the, the half charge in the torus defined through the x2 variable. Then I would call it Q2 with an index one or two in the, in the, in the, in up. Okay, and now um, an important object for the, for this setting of Hastings and Michalakis uh, is a, is a threading of flux uh, uh, through the torus. And the, the way how um, they do it is to introduce uh, twist, anti-twist Hamiltonian and twist Hamiltonian. And twist, anti-twist Hamiltonian is just gauge transformation of the, of the original Hamiltonian uh, by, by this operator um, that of charge on the, on the half torus. And this introduces, uh, you know, this introduces that any time electron goes through the D minus boundary, it gets a flux phi. And then if it uh, you know, goes out from the plus boundary, it gets a flux minus phi. It's a gauge transformation, it's a pure gauge. Uh, and the twist Hamiltonian, uh, this Hamiltonian differs from the original Hamiltonian H only close to the boundaries. There is no change in, in, the, in the bulk. Uh, so for the twist Hamiltonian, we only keep the change uh, close to the uh, minus boundary. Uh, and, and in close to the plus boundary, uh, we revert back to the original Hamiltonian. Uh, and so now this twist Hamiltonian, that's not a pure gauge, it's indeed threads a flux phi uh, uh, through, the, through the torus. And now uh, the flux insertion uh, would, be, would be a unitary solving, um, uh, solving this shredding equation. This should be minus. We really want to thread the flux. So there should be minus here. And, uh, and uh, you can actually uh, explicitly solve this equation in the adiabatic limit. So as the, as the, as the, you know, as the, how fast do you thread the flux goes to zero, you can, ex uh, you can exactly solve how it acts on the ground state. So this C is a ground state. So this C is a ground state, ground state of H. And, uh, and you get the expression that is that is exponential of q minus k minus, uh, uh, you know, and uh, and uh, you know it's again then uh, another exponential is just q, uh, where this k uh, is uh, is is a Hastings uh, quasi adiabatic generator of the parallel transport, and it's given by uh, you know it, it has a formula uh, where this w so it's 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 a sort of a spectral average of the of the commutator of q or this h. And this W here, it's a, it's, a, it's a given function. So don't worry about this too much. It's a, it's a given function that decays fast at T. So function that decays uh, as T goes to infinity. Uh, absolute value of T, so in both directions. Uh, now, um, at the value of two pi, if I, if I insert one unit of flux, these Hamiltonians uh, are un unchanged because exponential of two pi i cube, q has integer spectrum is just one. So you get the same Hamiltonian. Uh, also this factor here uh, is not there at two pi. So, so we get that, uh, that if you, you know, um, apply, 
this unitary on the ground state, you get back the ground state. Okay, this, this is, you know, if you believe that the adiabatic theory works, but actually you can prove this relation independently. You don't, you, you can prove it uh, without using adiabatic theory. Okay, so so that was uh, that was introduction to the uh, result of Hastings and Michalakis. And now what Hastings and Michalakis realize that this whole conducting sigma, okay, I, I change a unit. So previously I wrote only proportional. I change a unit where this proportional is one. Uh, that that is the curvature at zero zero. You can you can express this curvature using these operators uh, k that I introduced here. Uh, and I introduced this index one and two, uh, given whether I consider them with respect to x one or x two axis. And then you know, as a computation, uh, you know, would convince you that that uh, uh, that that the that the curvature can be expressed as a as an expectation value. So the p is the ground set projection. So this is expectation value of commutator of k one and k two. Uh, now, now I want to stress one thing. Uh, uh, that that this commutator, so uh, this uh, is from my previous talk. I used the different notation. So this is k1, k2 here, and this minus is just is just minus. So uh, so the 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 k1 and k2, k1 minus and k2 minus are are located on the edges. So so this is object that is associated to the edge of the of the of the region of the half torus. So on this d minus boundary, so 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 they are located on these two uh, regions. So the commutator is located only at the origin. So um, so I am stressing this just because I think that was original question that that Victor approached me with, uh, uh, of uh, of uh, what is a you know local expression for whole conductance, and uh, and you know as far as I know Hastings and Michalakis were the first to give uh, you know local expression for whole conductance as a commutator of these two uh, quasi adiabatic generators, and then they also proved that this that this trace uh, is indeed integer up to uh, up to errors that decay in how big is the torus, uh, exactly by proving that the that the curvature is constant. Okay, uh, so that was the work of Hastings and Michalakis. And, uh, and, um, and I would go to explain uh, uh, in, uh, in some details uh, our work on this many body index theorem that is sort of umbrella uh, that, that, uh, that uh, is more general and gives this as a concrete example, but uh, through somewhat different. So the way how I think about it, that this um, work of Hastings and Michalakis sort of follow up the churn uh, uh, index approach. So the approach where the index you associate to quantum Hall effect is a churn number and other approach uh, follows up the work where it is more of the, the Fred Holm index than the churn index. Okay, so, so uh, now this is our work on the many body index theorem. So again, I will have a Hamiltonian uh, with a gap about the ground state and the ground state projection P. Uh, I would have charge conservation. So uh, I have the Hamilton as charge conserving and I will add a unitary. So there will be a new object uh, unitary uh, that is also charge conserving. So it conserves charge, but also it represents a cycle. So think of something like Tower's pump uh, or in the case of quantum Hall effect, things of this uh, uh, threading the flux from zero to, to two pi. Uh, it commutes with the, so this unitary commutes with the uh, with the with the ground state projection, uh, it can be also a symmetry of the system. We will see that that's another uh, case where it gives a non-trivial uh, non-trivial uh, result. And then again, I consider a charge in the half of the torus, and I, I I ask the question of how much is charge is transported if I if I apply this unitary dynamics U. And as before, because, because the total unitary commutes with the charge, I only have contributions uh, to, this, to, uh, to the difference uh, through these boundaries uh, D minus and D plus. So the contribution at uh, uh, D minus is T minus and contribution at D plus is T plus. Uh, Martin? Yes? You said uh, you could be a symmetry. So does this sort of provide a way to classify SPTs? Uh, 
not 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 to my knowledge uh, so i i mean um, let, let me let me get to it later okay let me postpone the answering the questions for later sure but to, not not to my knowledge i will uh, uh, the 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 very superficial answer why not to my knowledge if you are classifying spts there is no notion of q so i really need that this is a u1 system it's a if you want this is a classification of u1 symmetry systems uh, uh, so 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 uh, like u1 and then something else right so q is the u1 and then u gives you some other symmetry right correct yes correct okay oh uh Small remark, uh, you know, not very important. Actually, well, let's not worry about it. Um, you know, if 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 uh, if someone uh, gets confused, I can go back to it. Uh, it's not important now. Okay. Now, what this many-body index theorem says that if you if you look what is this uh, what is expectation value in the ground state of the charge transported through the d minus boundary, so this is this d minus, then this is integer up to something that decays uh, in the system size. Uh, if you, if you, uh, you know, uh, if the rank of the projection is not, uh, is not one, uh, but it has a rank uh, P, which is some integer P, but you have a topological order condition, uh, which means that, uh, you know, inside the bulk, uh, different degenerate ground state can be distinguished in the bulk. They can only be distinguished by observables that uh, that uh, wrap around the system. So if you have a topological order condition and you assume this this con this condition in addition, then you get that for any ground state, so any object psi in the range of the projection, the expectation value of the transported charge is an integer divided by p. So that's that's how one obtains uh, uh, fractional uh, whole conductance um, instead of the instead of the integer whole conductance. And let me give you a few examples. So I think the simplest example uh, is, is lipschultz mattis theorem. So uh, if U is a translation by one side, uh, then, then uh, there's different U star Q, U minus Q. It has, has a stack of charges uh, at zero that are, that are missing because I moved them. So I had this, I had this charge in the, in, the half, uh, in the half space and I move it uh, by one. So, so I have a stack here that is missing at zero and I, I edit something at L plus one uh, or maybe it's L half plus one. So, so, uh, so I have this stack of charges zero and, and another contributing another that, that you know, symmetrically uh, they, they appear at the end of the region. Um, so this means that this is equal to T minus. This means that this is T minus or uh, and, uh, and this means that the theorem says that expectation value of this stack of charges uh, is one over p times integer when one over p is the state degeneracy. Uh, in other words, if you have a translation or invariant system with a conserved charge and it's a gut, then the charge in a hyperplane is an integer multiple of one over the degeneracy of the ground state. And this is exactly what this, you know, is the higher dimensional version of uh, fractional lipschultz mattis theorem that was proved by Hastings uh, in 2004. The original 1D version uh, 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 was proved by lipschultz mattis It's typically formulated a little bit differently, but, but uh, uh, so this is basically formulation by Oshikawa. Uh, the, 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 the equivalent of this formulation is, is, is sort of just like thinking through the statement. It, it's sort of just thinking through what, what does it say. Okay, so this is, this is so, so, um, so, so this is just showing that, you know, if you take a uh, translation uh, as the unitary in our theorem, uh, you recover lipschultz mattis theorem in, in a one line computation. And, uh, you know, since we were discussing quantum Hall effect, let me also uh, give the quantum Hall effect. So again, you take as a unitary, so you go through the laughing argument, you take as a unitary, the unitary that adiabatically insert this, this one flux. Uh, as I already discussed before, this is exactly this U. So I, I switched uh, one and two, but uh, this is the unitary that, that inserts, uh, uh, you know, adiabatically one flux. And, uh, and uh, you know, again, by the theorem, uh, 
that that uh, that uh, that we discussed this is integer a multiple of one over p uh, the, the 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 charge that goes through this d minus boundary upon insertion of this of this unit flux uh, then then uh, there is a computation that you need to do to to show that this is really whole conductance although it's nearly a definition of whole conductance but but uh, you know we then did computation to indeed show that this is equal to the hastings michalakis uh, uh, expression for the whole conductance. Uh, though I would say that, you know, uh, uh, if you think of laughing argument, the amount of charge that you get crossing, uh, you know, uh, boundary, uh, if you insert this one flux, uh, is, is essentially a definition of, of, of whole conductance. Okay, you can, you can do more examples. Um, uh, so, uh, of course, if you, if you do it for free fermions, you get the original index of projections. Uh, I already explained with Schultz-Matthies theorem. You can get a Bloch's theorem. Bloch's theorem says that there are no ground state currents uh, in uh, in uh, in, um, uh, in in local systems. So so in a, in a, in one D systems, you, there are no ground state currents. Uh, period without any further condition. Uh, in a, in a, if you go to higher D, uh, there are no ground state currents if you have a gap. So, so, um, um, okay, but Watanabe, it's not like the Bloch's theorem. Um, so Watanabe is one of the latest work, uh, which, which, which I think very nicely, you know, explained this Bloch's theorem, uh, in the, in the gapped case. So in 1D, in the, in, in 1D, uh, um, in 1D case without the gap, uh, uh, here we can obtain Bloch's theorem in any D with a gap, uh, 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 saying that there are no ground state currents um, uh, in any D if you have a gapped system. Uh, okay, I discussed the proof of quantization. You can get uh, if you if you take together magnetic translations and uh, inserting flux, uh, you can get uh, I call it Avondanas aggregations. Uh, not sure what whether there is like a, a, a Canonical name for this. Uh, so the uh, relations that that uh, that connect uh, density. Uh, uh, this is not the flux speed that was previously. This is flux for the for unit area on the torus uh, of this magnetic uh, uh, field B, and the, and the whole conductance sigma. Uh, other thing you can do, you can prove that uh, there are abelian excitations in fractional quantum hole effect. So anytime you have you have. Uh, uh, Fraction hole conductance, you can prove through this theorem that there are abelian excitations. And you can also prove that, uh, that these excitations uh, have fractional charge uh, that, is, that is given by the same fraction as the, as the whole conductance. Uh, okay, uh, I uh, think I have two minutes left. Uh, is that the case? Uh, uh... Time flies. I think we started five minutes later, so. Little more then than let that. me let me maybe tell, tell a little bit about the proofs, uh, particularly because it shows how this abelian onions appear, uh, which may be a little bit of interest. Uh, so 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 if you have any observable A and you define this like uh, spectral averaging uh, that was introduced by Hastings uh, um, uh, and another paper about this is Bachmann, uh, Michalakis, Nartagal, Sims. Uh, so there exists uh, uh, W that decay uh, quite fast, but not, not exactly exponentially, uh, such that if you do this spectral averaging, uh, it commutes with the ground state projection. So you take any observable, you, you, uh, you, this, you do this local because, because V decays as time goes to infinity, and you have Lee Robinson bounds for this, uh, for this evolution. Uh, you, get, you get some kind of local spectral averaging, that, that produces observable that commutes with the ground state. And, uh, and, um, and this particle means if this is applied for a charge in region omega, so if I have, uh, over, if I have region omega, and this is, this is applied to the charge observable in that region, so maybe I should make a picture. So, uh, so I have, again, uh, my, my space, and I have region omega, and I'm looking at Q omega in that region. So, so this impl particle implies that there exists the operator K that is supported on the boundary, 
so that 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 is only supported on the boundary uh, uh, such that you know it 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 encodes all the fluctuations of the charge uh, in the ground state so so if you subtract it uh, this q uh, bar uh, commutes uh, uh, with the ground state so this means that this k encodes all the fluctuations uh, this is some notion of locality that you you can only expect in gap systems so here the here the gap is clearly uh, very important and and now uh, using this kind of uh, this kind of uh, operator q bar this like charge uh, um, sort of uh, this subtractic fluctuations, we can start forming uh, unitaries that are associated to loops in the system. So, so for uh, for a boundary of of this region omega, I can associate a unitary that is that that acts only on that boundary that is given by exponential two pi i this q bar. And uh, and uh, by by construction. It, it, it commutes with the ground state, so that this commutation is zero, and, uh, and, um, and it's supported on the boundary. And if on top of that, you have topological order, you can convince yourself that the that only thing that it can do uh, is, is uh, on the, on the, on the you know, possibly degenerate uh, ground state space is a phase, because it doesn't wrap around. This is omega that is just like somewhere inside the bulk. It can be large, but it doesn't wrap around. Uh, and now you can you can start looking at non-contractible loops. So you can you can this is a torus, and you can look at the uh, region omega, that is sort of half of the torus, and now it has two boundaries, uh, and you can associate again the fluctuations of charge across these two boundaries, and you can construct associated q bar. But now this q bar you know has you know there are two contributions to k, the k minus and k plus. So you can associate u plus minus. You can associate the one uh, unitary to loop that that loops around the torus around the d minus boundary, and another unitary that loops around the torus around the d plus boundary. And if the distance of these boundaries is is large, uh, then it turns out that each of them separately uh, preserves the ground state. So you have uh, two unitaries that act far away together. They preserve the ground state. It turns out that also each of them has to preserve the ground state. Uh, and now, you know, on torus, uh, there, there are two non-trivial loops. So you can associate such unitaries to two non-trivial loops and, uh, and, uh, and get two unitaries that preserves ground state. And it turns out, so I'm not showing how, I'm just sort of giving you flavor how the proof goes, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, such unitaries have an anionic uh, commutation relation. Uh, where the where the where the where the phase that you get is exactly given by the whole conductance. So this Q over P uh, is the whole conductance kappa. Uh, so this is also I call it sigma. So this is exactly the uh, sigma. This is the whole conductance. Uh, uh, okay, it's actually written here. Um, so th that's sort of the that's sort of the key element uh, of the proof is to establish uh, this this anionic commutation relations. Uh, it, it's done by by continuation. So you 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 uh, continuously move this flux, and it's then done by you know by differentiating and integrating and expressing this commutation relation. Now now you can consider open curves. So this was all about closed curves. Typically, when closed curves have anionic uh, commutation relations. This means that open curves this would create onions at the endpoints. And let me let me just switch to this slide. This is indeed the case. So if you have a U that is, you know, uh, okay, uh, how you associate the U to a to a to a open curve? Well, you associate it to a closed curve, and then you arbitrarily chop it. So so it's a local object. You arbitrarily chop it to only you know include uh, uh, something around this segment. And if you do that, uh, you find out that uh, you know it only changes the ground state at the endpoint, and at this endpoint, uh, it creates a particle that that this that is uh, abelian onion, uh, in a sense that you can easily check that if you take another one and you braid it around, 
uh, you get a phase that is exactly given by the whole conductance. And, uh, and also, if you compute the charge of this, of this, uh, uh, of this excitation, so the local charge uh, of this excitation compared to the ground state charge, so this is uh, expectation value of charge in this box R minus expectation value in the ground state, so epsilon is the excitation, uh, then this is by definition uh, given exactly by what we saw before in the, in the index theorem. And so again, by the index theorem, this is exactly Q over P, uh, P is the Gauss degeneracy and Q is an integer. So it, it, it uh, so the, the theorem uh, shows that, that, uh, that this topological, so system with a, with a non-trivial, uh, with a fractional whole conductance has to have this uh, abelian uh, anionic excitations. Okay, and that's sort of it. Let me switch, uh, don't go for the conclusions. If you want to, uh, you know, read about it, um, I think the, the, the best, this is a short uh, physics paper that, that gives all this material. Uh, so so, uh, um, so this, is a, this is a short read if you want to read about it. Uh, these two first two papers is not something I talked about. The first papers are about this adiabatic problem that I was not talking about. And, uh, and that's all. Uh, thank you for coming um, on Friday, and I'm happy to uh, answer questions. Thanks. Let's uh, try to clap and unmute ourselves in the opposite order. All right.